In this video, we'll see the lab for VTP version 3. Now, in the previous video, if you if you remember, we have discussed some of the VTP version 3 enhancements. Probably in this video, we are going to practically verify those enhancements. So for practical verification, I got a small lab documented here. I got I got my routers here, which is running some 15 dot uh, IOS here on the switches, switch 1 and switch 2, uh, which are 3560 switches. Now, uh, I got a link connecting between uh, switch 1 and switch 2. Now, uh, I got plenty of links, so probably I'll be using just one link for verification. So what we'll do is we'll try to configure VTB version 3 in this setup on switch 1 or switch 2, and then we'll verify the synchronization of the VLANs as well as the synchronization of the MSTP configurations and also and also we'll see a configuration of the extended VLANs and then also we'll see the synchronization of the private VLAN configurations which was supported only in the VTB version 3. So let's get started with this. So before I get into the actual command line, let me do the basic configuration. Now the first thing I'm going to configure the link connecting between switch 1 and switch 2 as a trunk link. For the synchronization of the VTB, I already got the link connected between them. So I'll, I'll go to interface F0 by 24 and I'm going to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk. And let me do the same thing on the other side of the switch. So I'm using some manual trunking. Let's go to switch two as well and configure the links connecting between the switch two and one as a trunk links. Now, if you if I use show CDP neighbor, probably you'll see a lot of links connecting here. But I'm going to verify only with the switch one and switch two only I'm using F0 by 24 link. So probably you can have multiple links also connected. Now if I verify show VLAN brief, I have deleted the VLAN.dat file and the switches are, are with the default any default VLANs that is VLAN 1 and 100234. Uh, 100234 and then I'll verify show VTP status. Now by default, it, it's going to run VTP version 1, but this platform, what I'm using, it is capable of running version 3, also VTP. So our main focus will be on verifying the VTP version 3 in this lab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to my switch and I'm going to configure some domain name here. So I'll, I'll try to configure some domain name here. Let's, let's take an example. The domain name I'm going to use as NOA is a domain name and the password I'm going to use as NOA123. And then, and then I'm going to configure by default the switch anyway, it is in server mode. And the next thing I'm going to configure version three. So we are not going to verify the version one or version two here because we already verified in a separate section. We'll only verify with version three in this, in this setup here. So let's go to the switch one and the commands are, we need to configure the VTP domain name NOA and then VTP password. I'm going to use something like NOA123 and then VTP version 3. So once I give VTP version 3 now, uh, you, you will see, let, let me just quickly configure the same commands on other sphere as well. So I'm not going to configure the modes. The default mode is uh, server mode here. So I'm going with the default modes anyway here. So let me just configure because there's a version mismatch. So that's the reason you'll see those messages. Once I change this, you will see those messages will be removed. And now, so I'm not going to use other links. So probably these 19, 20, 21, 22, I'm not using those links. So that is something I don't require. So if I verify show interface trunk, I should see the interface 24 as is configured as a trunk link with a manual trunking. And if I verify show VTP status after the configuration, now I should see the, the my switches should be running VTP version three and the domain name. And we are not going to enable pruning or verify the pruning here. And the revision number, the number of existing extended VLANs, we didn't create anything. Now, now you can see here, it, this, this VTP version 3 is going to support the VLAN feature as well as MST features. So probably what we'll do is for verification. Now before we verify, let's verify the password. Now this is one of the major drawback with the VTP version, uh, version 2 or version 1. When, uh, when anyone can verify the password by giving a VTP password command, show VTP password command. Now the major enhancement in the version three is we can hide this password by using an extra option. Like I can say the password is NOA123 
and then I can give an option of hidden. So when I give the option of hidden, it is going to hide the password. Let me just configure the same thing on, on the switch to as well. Now once I configure this on the switch to, now for verification what I can do is I can use a command called show VTP password. If I give show VTP password, you can see the password is in encrypted text. So this is one of the major enhancement uh, in the VTP version 3. The password will not be displayed in a clear text and this is the one, one verification we did. And now the next thing what we'll do is we'll try to create some VLANs on a switch one and we'll try to synchronize the VLAN information. Anyway, both are servers. So for creating the VLAN, we just need to go to config mode and then we just need to say VLAN 10. Now once I give VLAN 10, you can see the message here. VTP VLAN configuration is not allowed when the device is not the primary server. Now if you remember, we discussed that in the VTP version 3, we have two different uh, primary servers we have something called default server no, the default server will be just like a read-only copy so we cannot create anything it's more like a client okay but the only difference is uh, in case of client it is not uh, going to synchronize so the default is the server mode but we can make a specific server as a primary server now the major enhancement in the version 3 is if you're making a specific server as a primary server only that particular a server will create the VLANs and it is going to allow to synchronize the information. So by default, the, all the servers will not be a primary server and you can make any one server as a primary server. So that's the reason even though it is a server here, it is not allowing us to create because it is not the primary server. So what we need to do is we need to, in order to create the VLANs, we need to make uh, any one switch as a primary server. Now again, there will be only one primary server in the VTP domain. So to make that, we need to be in the privilege mode and then we need to say VLAN, VTP and then we need to say VTP primary and then we can define this is primary for whether VLAN or MST. So we are not getting into MST. We right now will verify only the VLAN synchronization information. So later on, we'll come back to MST as well. Now, once I give this, it, if, if there is a VTP password configured, then it will prompt you the password. And if there is no VTP password configured, in that case, it will not ask you for the password. So you, you, you need to give the VTP password. I have configured NY123. And then it is going to verify. It will ask the, some confirmation before it, it makes this particular switch as a primary server. Now I can see it is asking the confirmation. So it, it, it verifies any conflict of the VTP devices. And then it will ask you the confirmation. Just press enter. Once we press enter now, this switch will be considered as a primary server and it will update the MAC address and this will be the primary ID. So let, let us verify that. Now show VTP status. Now if I verify show VTP status, uh, there you can verify the primary ID. Now primary ID is the MAC address of the primary server. Now even if you verify the same thing on the switch too, you can see the same console message here. The MAC address of the switch one and if I verify VTP status, I can see the switch one is the primary server. Okay. Now once we make this particular switch as a primary server, now we can make changes. Now I can create VLAN 10, comma VLAN 20, comma VLAN 30, VLAN 40, like that we can create multiple VLANs. Now you can see there is no warning message here. Now if I verify show VLAN brief for verification of those VLANs on the switch one, I can see the VLANs being created. And the same thing if you verify on the switch two as well, show VLAN brief. Now I should see the same VLAN synchronized between switch one and switch two. Now by default here, both are servers and I can, I can configure this particular switch as a client also. Uh, even I can configure that. If you want to make that possible, then we just need to go to the config mode, VTP mode, uh, VTP mode. And then you'll find some four options here. We can make it as a server, transparent, off. Off is nothing but we can even disable VTP on this particular switch and client. So I'm going to say VTP mode and then I can say client. 
and then it will ask you whether you want to make this particular client for MST or VLAN information. Default is VLAN. So I'm not going to change it to VTP client. As of now, I'm going with a server because anyway, it will synchronize the VLAN information. So the next thing what we'll do is the one more thing we discussed that in the VTP version three, we can also create extended VLANs. Now in case of version one and version two, you can only use the extended VLANs in the transparent mode. So you can only do that in the transparent mode, but whereas in the version three, you can, if you're running VTP version three, you can do that. You can, ex you can use the extended VLANs and you can allow to synchronize between them as well. But in the version one and version two, it's not possible. And that is only local, local to the switch and that too, it works only in the transparent mode in case of version two. So let's go to switch one. Switch one is our primary, primary server here. So I'm going to create a VLAN, let's say 2000, 5.2001. So you can see I'm able to create the VLAN without any problem. And if I verify show VLAN brief, now I can see the VLAN 2000 and 2001 created. And also I should see the same VLAN on the switch to synchronizing. Now that is something we can do. We can also create some extended VLANs for verification. Now the next thing, uh, there's one more thing we can do. Let's say if you want to make uh, any other switch as a primary, let's say in my scenario, switch one is my primary server. Uh, maybe right now you don't have access to the switch one or right now you are in the command line of the switch one, switch two, and you want to make some changes to the existing VLAN information or you want to add some new VLAN information. So in that case, I can change the role of of this switch as a primary. Now, when I change the, this particular switch to primary, automatically it will remove the role from the switch one. Okay. And then I can change it to primary as well. Let's try to do that. Now here we'll verify that I want to make a switch two as a primary. Now in that case, we need to say VTP. Anyway, that particular switch has to be in the server mode. Right now switch two is in the server mode. So I'm going to say VTP primary and for VLAN. Now it is asking the VTP password. The VTP password is NVA123. And then it is going to verify. And after some time, it will ask you the confirmation. And once I press the confirmation, then probably it will make the switch to as a primary. Now, now I can see the MAC address is changed. Now the switch to is a primary. Now also it will update all the other switches in the VTP domain. Now if you verify the VTP status on the switch one, now you should see the show VTP status on the switch one. Now the switch one will go back to the normal normal server mode, uh, just like secondary server we can say. And whereas now the primary server changes to switch two. Now which means you can only make changes on switch two now because it is a primary server. Now probably within the VTP domain you can have only one primary server and whenever you make any specific other switches as a primary server like in this case i have made a switch to as a primary server in that case it will remove the primary role from the switch one now on the switch switch two i can create some vlans let's create some extended vlan 3000 to 3001 and then verify the same show vlan brief now i should see that information on the switch two and automatically it will synchronize within the switch one as well. So I'm going to say show VLAN brief for verification. Now I should see the VLAN 3000 and 3001 is created. And also whenever you make any changes, again, the configuration revision number keep on increasing. It's, it's something more uh, similar to the VTP version one or version two. But the only difference is here, the higher revision number will not uh, override the configurations to other switches because the only primary switch can only uh, update the information. So whenever they are updating any information, it is going to check this primary ID. And if that matches, then only it will, it will take the VLAN information from that particular switches. So if this primary ID do not match in that case, it will not accept the VTP uh, VLAN information from any other switches. So there's something a security enhancement added in the version three here. So now, if I try to go to switch one, let's say if you want to create some VLAN on switch one, right now you cannot create the VLAN on the switch one because it is not the primary server. So you can have only one primary server at one time in the VTP domain again. 